Words have made people fly different airlines, buy different clothes, shop in different stores. When we influence language, we influence thinking, we influence behavior, we influence elections. Sorry, had to go there, right? All right, um, no, we won't go into that too much. But when we influence language, we influence thinking. Now, to provide some context, I want to share a little bit about brand overall. And when we talk about brand, there are three identities to every brand. Every single brand has three sub-identities. And you will quickly find that I am an alliteration guy. I like things to start with the same letter. If I ever had kids, it would be ridiculous. All right, it would be ridiculous, OK? Um, the first one's name would be MK Ultra. Thank you for that, Joel. All right, he told me, and they just start with MKs all the way down the line. But there are three identities to every brand. One is the verbal identity, two is the visual identity, and three is the value identity. Most of us are very familiar with the visual identity of a brand. Colors, typeface, photos, you name it. We understand value identity, which is your positioning relative to the marketplace. Are you Louis Vuitton or are you Walmart? Both brands make a lot of money. They just make them in very different ways, correct? But what most folks don't understand is that there is a verbal identity to the brand, and the verbal identity of the brand is determined simply by copywriting. Have you noticed, who's noticed that no matter how cool all these social media apps get, TikTok, Instagram, you name it, how good your photos look, you still have to write a caption? Yeah, right, you still have to write a caption. Doesn't matter if you're as handsome as Joel Kahn, you still gotta write a caption for people to engage in your content. So this is why copywriting is so important. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this. You all ready? Yeah, okay. Now, when it comes to writing, when it comes to communicating through the written word, this will be around for as long as human beings are alive. Okay, it'll be around for, forever. And there's one thing that I wanna help us to frame out and understand, because this is not necessarily a workshop on direct response copy. This is not a, a workshop where we're talking about sales messages per se. You can come to the session right after that with my very good friend, Ray Edwards, and he's gonna talk a little bit about that. Don't leave the room, all right? It's a free plug, he did not ask me to say that. Okay. But today's topic with me is really about persuasive writing, and there's one thing I want us to all understand, and this is like picture worthy, okay? That marketing isn't about closing a sale, it's about opening a relationship. Are we good with that? Does that feel better? Yeah, like when we write stuff, when we market, it's not about just closing a sale, it's first about opening a relationship. And here's the thing, for any relationship to grow and thrive, you have to talk. If you're here with your significant other, nudge them in the elbow, right? Just, yeah, you gotta talk. We all know this. For any relationship to grow and thrive, you have to communicate. You have to communicate on behalf of understanding the other person or the other party. We all understand this. So when we talk about copywriting, it's all about building a relationship initially to ease them down the path. Now, I know a lot of us, we're, we're pretty savvy marketers. None of us are really beginners here. And we, we've probably seen this. How many of you have seen an influx in the sale of swipe files and stuff like that, right? People are selling templates, yeah? Yeah? How many of you used them? No one's used them? No, it's okay, it's not, it's not plagiarism. I'm not trying to trick you here. Anyone ever like steal someone else? No, okay, I shouldn't use the word steal. Uh, somewhat borrow and be inspired by someone else's copy and tweak a headline and you, you just, come on, let's just be honest. Honesty is the root of all you know, progress, right? Okay, and uh, so there's this myth out here now that people think that swipe copy is gonna make everyone sound the same. And that's a myth, it's not true. You can, you can see a headline that's written on the page that really grabs you and you can tweak the words, and by and large, it'll work. Most people think that swipe copy makes everyone sound the same. That's not true. The reality is that 90% of what works for others can work for you. It's the last 10% that sets you apart. I'm going to give you some examples on this so that all of us can write for our brands, whether you are a solopreneur, a creator, a podcaster, a blogger, or you are marketing manager of a small, mid, or large size company, I'm gonna show you how companies are using personal voices in their copywriting, okay? So when we talk about that last 10% of what makes you different, this is what we're gonna work through this afternoon. And I just like to jokingly refer to this as special snowflake copy, all right? This is what makes you different. This is what makes you special. 
Okay? So let's talk a little bit about how we differentiate our marketing when it comes to copywriting. How do we differentiate? The first is context. It's context. We have heard many times in events like this that content is king, but context is the kingdom. That's even better. Because Tony Robbins and his marketing team can write something like this, helping you bridge the gap between where you are and where you wanna be. That means one thing in that context. You could take the same slogan, right? You can take the same slogan and, uh, and apply it to a completely different business and it'll mean something totally different. Bridging the gap between where you are and where you wanna be. I mean, you know, if that's like a fitness ad, that's gonna read very different, right? So the context is very, very important. And to help you write in a more personal voice and to help us write in voices that are unmistakably ours, I wanna lead you through three quick questions. And whether you're the senior copywriter, the junior copywriter, the only copywriter, you're not a copywriter, you're the only person that's writing anything right now and you just need to make this work, I want, you, I want to challenge you to work through these three questions. The first is, and these are what I call the PB3, the personal brand three, just to help us write the voice, but the first is what pisses you off? And I'm using that term on purpose to evoke some sort of emotion. What ticks you off? What pisses you off? The second, is what breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? And the third is what is the big problem you're trying to solve? It doesn't matter if you're a plumber, it doesn't matter if you're a pizza maker, it doesn't matter if you're a business coach, it doesn't matter if you're a software company. The heart of writing in a voice that's unmistakably yours means that it has to come from the heart. It has to come from the core. Right. What ticks you off? What breaks your heart? What's the big problem you're trying to solve? The first question, what pisses you off, what ticks you off, is the injustice that you see in the world. Many of us in this room started our business because there was an injustice that we saw in, and experienced in this world. Whether it was the injustice of having to drive through morning commutes every day, right? That's okay. Someone felt it was an injustice that people's ears were dirty and then invented the Q-tip. Thank God for that person. Someone thought it was an injustice in the world that people should sweat to death during the summer and they invented air conditioning. God bless that man. It starts somewhere. What breaks your heart is the compassion that you have for people, the compassion that your brain has for people. And then the big problem you're trying to solve is simply your business. Please remember this, and I don't have it on the deck here, but write this down. Business is nothing more than solving a problem for a profit. That's really it. That's, it's very simple. That's all business is. Solving a problem for a profit. So when we consider how all of this comes together, we see that when we just, it's a simple diagram. That's our brand messaging. When we get to the heart of what, that's, what's at the middle between these three questions, that is simply our brand message. And that creates context. That creates context for everything that we write and say and do.